foreign uh, colony, the UK, here in New York City, in support of Julian Assange. Uh, my name is Randy Credico. I am, I am here today to move it along. We have a lot of speakers today. We have a lot of speakers, so I am going to uh, be very brief. We're going to get from one to the next, to the next, to the next, until the very end, which will be Roger Waters will be here. And I want everybody to be very respectful. Stay back. And don't listen uh, to uh, some of the noise uh, blowing in. All right, so we'd like to bring up, we'd like to start this with Chuck Slacken from New York City Free Assange. Chuck is going to say a few words. We're going to move it right along. I want to say a few words on behalf of the grassroots organizers who've been working in support of Julian Assange from the beginning for years, even long before there were national organizations involved in this movement. There were people who were getting out there, printing their own flyers, being in the streets with their own signs, uh, call, calling the media, getting the word out. And they've been the backbone of this movement. And for those here today who are, maybe it's their first time that they're an event for Julian Assange, I say uh, welcome, because it's important for all of us to uh, be involved and get more people involved in this as, as we go. I'm a union activist, and it's important for us to get the unions involved in this movement in support of Julian Assange which they haven't been so far, because we can use their members, we can use their resources, and we can also use their experience in organizing. Because one thing that union organizers understand is you have to bring people together, their members, on what they can all work on together. Not to, not to uh, 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 concentrate on the things that bring us apart, so it's important for us to come together and follow that. And what all we have to do to work on, on behalf of Julian Assange is to believe in no extradition, dropping the charges and freedom for Julian Assange. That's enough that we need to grow the numbers of people on, 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 on to work on this. And I'd like to publicly thank Randy Credico for all he has done as a driving force to free it. Julian Assange, free Julian Assange, drop the charges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, there's always a few agent provocateurs around, and I'd like to say hello to them. I want to say hello to everybody, including the uh, five undercover agents from the NSA and the CIA that have sent some of their agents in here to really bother us. But let's just ignore them, all right? We are here to support Julian Assange and end this persecution of Julian Assange. Others would like to see it continue, and you can hear them as they interrupt us today, but we got to continue moving forward. And right here, all the way from Germany, she is a very dynamic leader of the New Left Party. She's a member of the Bundestag, and she's been with the Assange movement for a long time. She spoke here last year, and she spoke in D.C., and she's been working her tail off and supported Julian Assange with legislators in this country, and I have a difficult time pronouncing her last name. I'm just, she's known. You know, remember Sammy Davis? They said, just Sammy? It's just seven, seven. Give her a big round of applause. Thank you, Randy. Thanks, dear friends. I bring you the solidarity greetings from Germany and Europe for this important action for press freedom today on the International Day of Human Rights. Fighting for Julian Assange's freedom is nothing less than fighting for freedom itself. And dear friends, we are not few. On the contrary, 
support for Julian Assange is growing. Five major newspapers that have worked with Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, New York Times, The Guardian, El Pais, Le Monde, Der Spiegel, they have just published a joint appeal calling for the end of Julian Assange's political persecution by the US government. And in Germany too, there is a growing movement for his release. For several years already, there has been a non-partisan, a cross-party parliamentary group in the German Bundestag in which parliamentarians for all parties participate with the aim of working for the freedom of Julian Assange and demanding from the German government political asylum for Julian in Germany. And in a, it gets better. In a joint non-partisan appeal that I helped to initiate, 12 former ministers, including several justice ministers, writers, artists, journalists, they are all campaigning for the release of Julian Assange. And even ministers of the German current government supporting the release of Julian Assange. And after many years of campaigning, in July of this year, the German parliament succeeded in passing a um, cross-party resolution for the release of Julian Assange, and the German Bundestag condemned the political persecution of Julian as an attack on press freedom and called the German government to work to secure his release from the British custody as well as to end the extradition case to the United States. It was a vast majority of the German parliament supporting this resolution. And that means this is a great success and shows us that political mobilization works, dear friends. It works. And everything what is possible in Germany and Europe will also be possible in the United States. I believe in this. And now is the time to salute the new elected Congress and mobilize together in Washington, D.C. to defend the great U.S. Constitution and the First Amendment by winning bipartisan members of Congress to stand up for press freedom and to stand up for the freedom of Julian Assange. And this, this my friends, is the task and the goal for the new year. It must become the year of Julian Assange is released and can return to his family and his children who miss him very much. Let's free Julian Assange. Thank you. She stayed over. She was leaving this morning and she changed her flight to later on in the day just so she could be here. Uh, she just flew in from DC. She's got to go back to Germany. So once again, give a big round of applause for uh, Senator, Congressman, I don't know, in the Bundestag. Seven. Dagoin. How's that? That's it. She's very good. All right, can you hear? Can we turn the sound up? Can we? Is that as high as it goes? We're at. How's that? Is that good? All right, we'll hug the microphone today in front of the uh, U.S. Uh, colony here, their consulate. And uh, it is a crime against humanity which is happening today on this International Human Rights Day. It's a crime against humanity, what they are doing to Julian Assange for four years now. Four years he has been incommunicado. What has he done? He is no threat to anybody except for those who are a threat to everybody, which means the U.S. government and the British government. They are a threat to everybody. Julian is a threat to nobody, and he's inside this dank, dark, rancid, squalid, medieval dungeon called Belmarsh. 
So we got to continue. We cannot sit on our laurels today. This is a better turnout than last year at this time, but we got to continue every single day. Right. Tomorrow, what are we going to do? The next day, call, organize, have a rally, have a vigil, but we got to keep moving because we are facing incredible odds here. We are facing this and that and all of the other huge organizations, all of the MI6, MI5, CIA, NSA, all of these, we're fighting against them because they want him quiet. And we got to fight. We got to keep going, folks. And I, you know, I really just came back up here to read a letter. Uh, I got a couple of, um, couple of uh, messages. Cornell West could not make it. He was going to show up today and uh, he's in LA, but he did send me this. And I'm the worst reader in the world. In 40 years in show business, I never got any voiceover work because of it. But uh, this is from Cornell. My dear brother, would you hold this? Yes, sure. <laughs> hold this part too. That, oh, all right. My dear brother, Julian Assange, is a courageous truth teller and fact revealer who clashed with the lies of the American empire. Let us forever stand in deep solidarity with him. Cornel West. All right. Somebody else who's an actress or an actor can read the, uh, uh, later. Uh, this is from John Pilger, but it's way too much for me to read. All right, look at that. Forget about it. Take me a month to read that. All right, we're going to bring you up. Uh, a little, well, here, you practice it. All right. Garland Nixon. They can quiet him on Twitter, as they did the other day. Is a great, and Facebook, is a great satirist, is a great radio host, and one of the real, real wonderful individuals in support of Julian Assange for a long period of time. And he came all the way up from DC. Please don't hit me up for cab fare on that one. All the way up from DC, Garland Nixon is really a tremendous talent. Thank you, Garland. And he's going to speak now. Thank you, thank you. There are two issues here. We're here, sorry, we're here to support, okay, great. We're here to support Julian Assange, the person. Into the mic and loud. We're here to support Julian Assange and stand for him as a person, as a human being who is being abused and who is being tortured. And we're not going to go away. We're not going to stop. We're not going to give up. Everybody who is here today is going to continue the fight, is going to, whether it's on social media, whether it's talking to friends, making phone calls, we're going to continue the fight. There are the issues of justice, but there's the issues of a person who we all owe, who has enlightened us in so many ways. And we have to thank Julian Assange, the person for that. But we also have to look at the issues at hand. Can the government interfere and intercept information between a lawyer and the client and then use that information to prosecute the lawyer? You have no justice system if that can happen. And we have to ensure that we stand up and fight against these types of injustices because these can affect us all and will. Since we're standing up for Julian Assange, we can see the direction that this thing is going. And when we say we are all Julian Assange, part of what we mean is because we all stand up against injustice, we all stand to face the wrath of the empire in the same way that he does in so many ways. So I want to thank everyone for coming out here today and remind everyone this is symbolic, this is great, everybody should see what we're doing, everybody should hear what we have to say, but when we leave, we must all keep up the fight. Thank you. Keep the sidewalks clear in the edges, please. What was that? Keep the sidewalks clear in the edges. All right, keep the sidewalk clear and the edges so people can walk through. Otherwise, we'll be moved out of here. All right, so please make at least a two foot three. You see that center piece there? All right, that big block. Try to let that be a path for everybody. 
made it all right but guess what guess you get to speak next do you want to speak all right so um, for many years I was involved how I did, how did I get involved with Julian Assange is that he got on my radio show in 2016 uh, and the person that got him on the show reluctantly I'm sure she regrets it today to some extent, was Margaret Ratner Kunstler. She's the one, she's been working with Assange on a legal basis since 2013. She is a long time and a very quiet, she does it quietly. This is something I admire so much about her, is that she does things and gets it done and doesn't look for a lot of applause for it. So she just, going back, I met her in 1987, I'd seen her on uh, she was the person of the week on ABC for her work on behalf of those that were being spied on and disrupted by the FBI peace groups and church groups out of Central America. So Margaret was involved in that big time. So would you please welcome civil rights attorney Margaret Ratner Kunstler. Yeah. I'm glad there's so many people here. This is um, Ken Hilly. Nice catch, man. I'll hold it. I'll hold it. Okay. We can get the chest. How's that? Is that better? Okay. I'm sorry. Um, the, the crowd here is larger than I've ever seen a crowd here. And that's. And, you know, I think that the work we're doing is having an effect. I really do, and I'm usually, you know, not optimistic, but I am optimistic about the number of people working for Assange, the number of people doing hundreds of different tasks, whether it's handing out leaflets, or giving speeches, or writing articles, or writing books. There are hundreds of people out there working for Assange, and that's something very new. And Assange would be happy for that because if you ever go and visit him during this period, he says, what are you doing for me? And he says that because he's paralyzed. He can't do anything for himself. So what are we doing for him? We're doing a lot for him. And times have changed. And I want to say that COVID has helped us because COVID has taught some of us who didn't know how to have conversations over uh, Zoom or over a Signal, now can do that. And so we can meet across the country and we can organize it, it, in 10 places at once. And that's really helped us. And the fight has to be carried out. And I'm a lawyer and I'm telling you the fight is not in the courtroom. I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to having um, lawsuits brought because that also I mean, brings we'll attention to Julian. Like five but minutes, okay, if really the fight is in the street. Yeah. And if we can All get right. enough I mean, people I, I, doing enough things, we'll be quickly, victorious okay? and we'll free Julian. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Um, let's have a little chant now. Free Julian Assange chant. One, two, three. Again! 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 Louder! Beautiful. All right. All right, go ahead. Keep going. All right. I have some time to burn. That's why I asked you to do that, Chan. Okay. All right. No. Uh, we have. Uh, you want to read that first? Yeah. All right. This is a letter from uh, uh, a message from John Pilger. He sent it to me yesterday. And uh, someone that is an actress, uh, Elizabeth Ruff, Maldonado Ruff, will come up and read this. I'll hold the dog. Uh, from John John Pilger. I'm a lefty, so let me. 
we switch hands. I first met Julian in 2009, and we have been friends since. For one thing, we share a black sense of humor. It's this sardonic side to him that has helped keep him going. Even during the darkest days in Belmarsh, his wit is the beacon of his resilience. It seems strange to say, but visiting Julian in that hellhole is uplifting, almost inspirational. Whenever I leave the prison visiting room, I always look back and there he sits, alone, waiting to be taken back to his cell, and his fist is raised high in eloquent defiance. But there's a limit to this heroism. If Julian is extradited to the US, that may be the end. He may not survive. Please think about that today. And if necessary, and in any way you can, stand in the way of his tormentors. Stand with him. Thank you. Free Julian, Free Julian Assange. 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 All right. Thank you. That's uh, John uh, John Pilger, uh, the great filmmaker and author and activist and uh, one of uh, Jillian's closest friends. Uh, somebody said to me, why don't we start a movement to boycott anything from the UK? And I said, well, what do I get from the UK? I hate warm, flat beer, A. Eh? And I don't buy weapons. That's all they have for fucking export is weapons. Oh, tea. John McDonough likes tea. I don't. Smithwicks. All right. Um, yeah. Shepherd's pie. You got to keep it. You got to. Here. This is guys from the NYPD. Don't make it illegal. Put aside one. Thank you, sir. A yellow vest. It's a yellow vest. All right. So, uh, who is next? Who is next? We're, we are going to bring up Joe Loria. I urge you once again to keep this uh, sidewalk clear in the middle there. This space in between. Coming up now is the managing editor of Consortium News. Joe Loria, give him a round of applause. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much, Randy. Can you hear me? Yeah. No? No, you gotta get us, you gotta, you gotta kiss it. All right, how's that? Yeah! All right, I'll try to keep my mouth there and not move my head. Now I'm gonna, Randy asked me to do an impersonation of Fidel Castro in terms of how long he wants me to speak. And I have a, I have quite a few things to say here. Uh, by first opening here, this building I used to visit every week for about 10 years to get a briefing from the British ambassador to the United Nations, because in this building is not only the consulate, but the UN mission. And I was a correspondent for 25 years down there at the UN. So I got a real sense, an insight into thinking of British diplomacy and uh, its role in the world and the influence it has. And they might be playing a game of letting people think, as Randy does, that they're a colony of the U.S. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. British diplomats are probably the best in the world, and so are their spies. They've been in this game a very, very long time. What came clear to me, and what I think is very obvious, even from the case of Julian Assange, is that the United Kingdom is not another vassal of the United States, like Germany or France, which reluctantly goes along with orders coming from Washington. We'll see Macron making noise as he goes to, to uh, see Putin in Moscow. To, he talks about a new security architecture for Europe. And then what happens? Her prime minister, her sorry, her chancellor also says things. We're not going to send weapons. But ultimately, they, they concede to the US. They let that pipeline be destroyed. Britain may have been involved in that destruction. The thing is, we don't know that for sure. But we do know that the British government, when it's lost its empire, really at the Suez crisis, when Eisenhower stepped up and stopped it, that's when they realized that they better join the United States in running a joint empire. 
And being as clever as they are, they're not just taking orders, in my view, from the United States. For example, in the first Gulf War, remember Margaret Thatcher said publicly to George H.W. Bush, don't go wobbly about attacking Saddam Hussein? This is the British Prime Minister talking to the President of the United States in public, telling him to grow a backbone and attack Iraq. In the second Gulf War, Germany and France voted against the authorization of the invasion down at the Security Council. That was one of the rare instances where a European so-called vassal stood up to the United States, De Gaulle pulling France out of NATO being another. But here was Germany and France voting with China and Russia not to authorize the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003. Guess which permanent member the only one voted with the United States? Very good. Great Britain. And why? Because it was planning to join the invasion of its former colony, Iraq, all along. Blair was not Bush's poodle, as is often thought. The plans were in there to invade, and they took part. They couldn't do it alone. They needed the United States with them. I'm not saying that Britain drove that, but they had an equal part in driving that invasion, the Downing Street memo, etc. All this talk about 45 minutes and Saddam can have a, uh, a missile in Trafalgar Square and all that rubbish that we were told. So coming to Julian Assange, we have to understand that this journalist is, uh, is being persecuted not just by the United States, but by Great Britain. Why? because they want him crushed. I'm talking about Whitehall. They want Assange crushed as much as the United States does for revealing crimes of state. They took an active part in the operation to arrest Julian Assange from the Ecuador Embassy in London. And how did they do that? Well, it was called Operation Pelican. They, and this is from Declassified UK's reporting in the last few days. The Home Office had eight staff. The Cabinet Office had seven staff working on the secret operation to arrest Julian Assange in April 2019. The Ministry of Justice, which runs the courts, they won't say if their staff was involved in this operation, Pelican. The Foreign Office at first refused to say if its premises were used for the operation. And they lied. A, a, a junior minister from the Foreign Office lied to Parliament saying that they weren't involved, and now it's been revealed that, yes, they had uh, several officers working on this case from the foreign office. And so Ian Duncan, who was foreign minister for the Americas, for Europe and the Americas from 2016 to 2019, he ran this UK campaign to force Assange out of the embassy. As a minister in parliament, he made uh, his, his opposition to Assange uh, very well known. He called Julian Assange a miserable little worm in a speech to the House of Commons. In his diaries, Duncan refers to, quote, the supposed human rights of Julian Assange. He admits in his book to, uh, to uh, arranging an article in the Daily Mail, a hit piece on Assange in the mail that was published the day after Julian was arrested. Duncan watched the UK police pulling Julian Assange out of that embassy from a, his operation room in the foreign office. He watched a live feed and they were wearing ties, his team, and the ties had, were adorned with little pictures of pelicans for Operation Pelican. And they had a drink to celebrate the arrest of Julian Assange. Afterward, uh, Theresa May, who was the Prime Minister at the time, announced to the House of Commons that he'd been arrested and there was a loud cheer. I don't know if it only came from the conservative backbenchers, could have also been Labour, I wouldn't be surprised. Duncan, the next day, or a couple of days later, flew to Ecuador to thank President Lenin Moreno, the new government of Ecuador that lifted the political asylum of Julian Assange. He thanked him and brought a beautiful porcelain plate from the Buckingham Palace gift shop. I just want to say that the independence of the British judiciary is at stake in this case. Assange waits a decision from the High Court on his application to appeal the extradition order as well as aspects of the lower court ruling. The Lord Chief Justice Ian Burnett is the judge who will decide whether to accept that appeal. And guess what? Alan Duncan and, Lo and, and Judge Burnett are good friends. They had lunch together. They went to their birthday parties. So we want to know, is this a, an independent judiciary in Britain? I'll tell you that it's clear that the image of British justice and justice itself is on the line in the case of Julian Assange. If he's extradited, the whole world will know 
the British role in this tragedy and, so, and this travesty. Thank you very much. All right, Steve Donziger is going to bring up our next speaker. Is Steve Donziger here? I don't see Steve Donziger, which means it redounds on me. Is he right here? All right, Steve Donziger needs no introduction. He will bring up our next speaker. Hi, everybody. Whoa. Um, it's unbelievable, isn't it, that we have to be here? Uh, can you hear me? Um, unbelievable that we have to be here to ask the Brits to do the right thing and free Julian Assange, who is probably the most persecuted political prisoner in the world today. I had the honor of being asked to introduce my friend Roger Waters. Um, you know, obviously Roger is known for his music, his creative genius, um, and his inspirational leadership on human rights. And uh, Roger, I want to salute you for what you do. Because <laughs> I like that military bearing. Um, a lot of people don't know all the things that Roger does behind the scenes in this world for people to help them get through difficult situations as I had, but also to more generally advance the cause of human rights. I love you so much, Roger, and get up here and tell us, tell us something about Julian. I'm adjusting this microphone because uh, I wrote something down last night and it's on my iPhone. I've no fucking idea what it is, but I'm gonna have a look. And whatever it is, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. Sophia! Hey baby! It's my goddaughter, Sophia. Hey. What was that? He was given the soccer score. Okay. Uh, one can't be too careful, you know, out in public. Trolls are everywhere. Hang on. This is really, this is weirdly bassy, this PA. Can we get any more top in it so that people can hear what I'm fucking saying? Get to it, my man. One, two, one, two, two. I saw I'll, I'll stay on mic, okay. I've no idea how long this is going to take because I can't remember writing it, but um, here we go. I, I can read it, which is brilliant. <coughs> Are you ready? Yeah! All right. Uh, what does that say? Good. Afternoon. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll stop joking. Well, probably not, you know. Um, it is great to see you all here, obviously. Um, well, who's that talking in, my, in the back of my... What the fuck is that? Turn it off. Somebody get that guy. I don't know what it is, but it sounds like bad radio. Shut up, please. Thank you. Let me sick my dog on him here. We're sicking Sophia, the goddaughter, on him. All right, here we go.
witness what's going on behind me, it, it's quite a good first sentence here. We live in what may be the craziest city, in what is definitely the craziest country in a crazy fucking world. Um, as the Big Apple goes into its completely crazy Christmas thing, I was just thinking, wouldn't it be great if the holidays... Uh, hang on a minute. What is that? Oh, is it in my ears, do you think? Oh, no. I know what it is. I know what it is. Hang on. Uh, they, I'm sorry that I've been doing all of that. I bet it's on YouTube or something. Open. That's what it was. Wow, we live and learn. It was a podcast playing in my hearing aids. <laughs> so all I can do is apologize to whoever I was shouting and screaming at back then. It was me all along. Okay. What a relief. Okay, back to back to my speech if I can find it. I'm sure I can. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. I was just thinking, wouldn't it be great if the holidays were free of our attachments to competing deities or their disciples or prophets and could simply be a seasonable expression of general thanks to no one in particular for the bounty that this beautiful planet bestows upon us poor sinners. <laughs> and thank you, madam. I don't know, somebody chuckled, which is nice. Um, and maybe even a celebration of our potential to look after one another. Paragraph. What's this got to do with Julian Assange? I hear you say, well, actually, everything. Bear with me, I'll get there. Ever since the persecution of Julian Assange started in 2010, or whenever it was, I've been boiling with rage. Finally, someone was providing we the people with a hitherto absent public service, namely, telling us the truth about what was really going on in the corridors of power and the theatres of war. The persecution has been going on for so long, it could have been hard to maintain our rage had not the smear campaign against Julian been enraging and diabolical and so constant. So the rage is still there, boiling away. But I'm going to digress and talk for a minute about hope Five years ago, in October 2017, during a tour of North America, I did a Q&A in Vancouver. It was a meeting to support the BDS movement. Thank you. And it was co-hosted by two charming ladies of different faiths. One, a Jewish lady, and one, Muslim. We had a good talk. You can find it on YouTube if you're interested. Oh, fuck off, Keith. Sorry, that was a friend of mine. He was uh, texting me about football. I've told you not to text me about football, ever. Okay, sorry. Um, we had a good talk. You can find it on YouTube if you're interested. Anyway, at the end, the Jewish, Jewish lady asked me a final question. She was a little bit overcome, I have to say. This, she was a sweet, sweet woman. She said, what gives you hope, she said. Isn't the human heart a remarkable organ? Mine, in that moment, that evening in Vancouver 2017, took me back to a morning in New York City 15 years earlier, in 2002. I was with an old friend a man called Etienne Rodagil, a great French lyricist who I was working with on Sa Era, an opera about the French Revolution. 
I, am, I will get there, I promise you. We would stop for breakfast and sat in a patch of morning sun at a table on the sidewalk outside a bar on 54th Street. I had an espresso. Etienne had a famous grouse, a large one, and opened a packet of Benson and Hedges cigarettes. We chatted, the usual breakfast small talk, you know, the meaning of life, that sort of thing. The Frenchmen do. Oh, sorry, sorry. Etienne took a few deep drags on his second or third Benson and did that thing Frenchmen do with their eyebrows raised and the corners of their mouths turned down. Hang on. <laughs> like that. He nodded. Ground out his cigarette in the ashtray, looked into my eyes and spoke. He said, <coughs> I was here. Translated, that is, I was here. I felt. That's the expression. Something. And perhaps I was not alone. Think about it. That is what gives me hope. Perhaps we are not alone. And that brings me back to Julian Assange. Julian Assange reminds me that I am not alone. Because in fact, without Julian Assange, we might as well be alone. Without a free press, we might as well be alone. Without basic human rights for all our brothers and sisters all over the world, irrespective of their color, religion, or nationality, we might as well all be alone. That is why we are standing shoulder to shoulder outside the British Embassy in New York City alongside our brother Julian Assange. So Julian, thank you for standing up to the man on our behalf these last 10 years. You are not alone. Here today on 2nd Avenue, New York, and neither are we. We are many, and we have a message for Vanessa Barreza, that apology for a magistrate that sent you down in that kangaroo court in London. Miss Barreza, you are a disgrace to the legal profession. Yeah. Fuck you. Sorry. No, that's not... <laughs> um, sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Sophia, quiet. When I spoke in London in Parliament Square back in February 2020, I wasted a few words on Boris Johnson, who was then the United States tame poodle. Sorry, Sophia. <laughs> Johnson. Sorry. In Parliament, he ignored the law and did the bidding of his masters in Washington. Today, the current pitiful British poodle, Rishi Sunak, is equally well-trained and biddable. Rishi, sit! Good boy. What about the law, Mr. Sunak? What about Magna Carta? What about basic human rights, Mr. Sue Hack Knack? You're fucking wolf, Rishi. Paragraph. Okay, last week there was a glimmer of light from the mainstream media. The New York Times, Le Monde, The Grounier, sorry, Guardian, Der Spiegel, and El Pais published an open letter in support of dropping some of the charges against Julian. Welcome to the party, guys! Where the fuck have you been all these years? All these years when your colleague, Julian Assange, needed you, where were all your editorials exhorting the people to take to the streets in their millions 
before the dungeon doors slammed shut on free speech forever. I sincerely hope your half-assed letter is not just a whimper to cover your own sorry asses. I hope so. We shall see. There are, there are others here to... I've nearly finished. There are others here to speak. So in conclusion, I'll just remind all interested parties, especially the executive branch of the government of the United States of America, Joe Biden et al., and also all members of Congress, to some advice my mother gave to me when I was just a young teenager. She said, Roger, you will have many important decisions to make during your lifetime. When you do, I advise you to, above all, do your research thoroughly. Do all the reading, listen to all opinions, especially opinions that differ from your own. If you are thorough and turn over every rock, you... It's all right, don't worry about me. I'm just <laughs> telling a story. Where the fuck was I? It doesn't matter. I can, I, I'll can. I'll find out. If you're thorough and turn over every rock, you will have done all the heavy lifting. The next bit of the process is easy. So what's the easy bit, Mum? You just do the right thing. So, Joe, come on, brother. For once in your fucking life, do the right thing. Free Julian Assange. Don't forget to feed the dog. Thank you. Thank you for the sweater, by the way. No, at all. All right. You, Thanks. Roger. Thanks a lot. Give him a We have a lot more speakers. Goodbye, Roger. Go ahead, Randy. All right. Don't go anywhere. We have a lot more speakers. Thank you, Roger. Roger Waters once again. Thank you, Jim and John. All right, we still have Max Blumenthal and many others, but coming up right now, coming up right now, are you aware of that truck that uh, was floating around DC, the billboard truck for four months with all of these signs here? Yes. Well, there are two people here that did the major financing of it. One is my friend, Pete. He doesn't want to be pointed out. And the other is that guy. No. Uh, is uh, a gentleman who has been involved for so many years in progressive causes. Uh, and plus he makes the best ice cream I've ever had. And that is the peanut butter baked fudge is my favorite. But uh, without him, that billboard truck would have run out of gas uh, uh, about six weeks earlier. So give a big round of applause to Ben Cohen. Ben Cohen. Well, uh, it's not exactly an ice cream kind of day. Uh, so you'll just have to be... Uh, yeah. Uh, I was supposed to be the lead up to Roger, uh, but he came first, so uh, here I am. You know, we are living more and more in a make-believe democracy. We are fed a mixture of lies and omissions and the big runaround. Not everybody wants to kiss you, baby. So when Assange stood up and said, the emperor has no clothes, by publishing actual government documents. They set out to smite him down with the full power and might of the US government. Let's kill him, says the CIA. Nah, that wouldn't look good. And besides, that would make him a martyr. I know, let's smear his name and come up with some trumped up charges. Well. They did that for a while, and that worked, but then there were no charges. Hey, I got a better idea. 
Let's stick him in solitary confinement in a maximum security prison for a bunch of years. That usually drives people crazy. Julian Assange has been held in solitary confinement. Solitary confinement. 23 hours a day, every day. That's over a thousand days of solitary confinement in a solid-celled wall smaller than a horse stable. That is torture. The UN says it's torture. The World Health Organization says it's torture. And according to the National Commission on Correctional Health Care, solitary confinement greater than 15 days is torture. Assange is being, public, is being punished, and the state of New York recognizes that solitary confinement over 15 days is torture, and they've banned it. It's not allowed in this state. He's being punished, and he hasn't even been convicted of anything. Innocent until proven guilty, my ass. You know, there was another extradition case in England not too long ago. It was General Pinochet, who was accused of committing war crimes. And he got to stay in a mansion under house arrest with an ankle bracelet. Julian Assange is in England awaiting extradition on a charge of exposing war crimes, and he's in solitary. We know what's going on here. This ordeal has lasted over 10 years, and our government is happy to stretch it out because what they're really about is making the threat to any journalist anywhere in the world that if you print information, truthful information, that the U.S. government doesn't want out there they will persecute you and make your life miserable. So we're here to have Julian's back because he did this for us. Sacrificed his freedom, his body, his mental health to tell us what our government has been doing in our name and with our money. Julian Assange wasn't supposed to be a hero. He is a publisher who published truthful information. In a country that believes in freedom of the press, that's not supposed to be a heroic act. It hurt nobody except the people whose corruption he exposed. But he's a threat to our militarized economy the military industrial congressional complex. That cabal has started or continued wars in the last 20 years based on lies at a cost of $8 trillion and 900,000 deaths. Julian Assange exposed the lies that drew us into those wars, the lies that justified continuing them, and the war crimes they lied about. Assange is right. If wars can be started by lies, peace can be started by truth. That is what motivates him. Truth, that's what the military industrial congressional complex is deathly afraid of. There are so many outrages in the world today. There are so many injustices. We are overwhelmed. We can't fight them all. How do we decide which outrage to take a stand on? Freedom of the press is the foundation. We will never even find out about all the other injustices if the press is muzzled. 
At a speech on the occasion of World Press Freedom Day, President Biden proclaimed, at least 360 people worldwide are currently imprisoned for their work in journalism. We all stand in solidarity with these journalists. Biden neglected to mention that one of those was Julian Assange. The reality is that President Biden stands in opposition to Barack Obama's decision not to prosecute Assange and instead is continuing Trump's war on the prince. It was Harry Truman who said, once a government commits to the principle of silencing opposition, it has only one way to go and that's down the path of increasingly repressive measures until it becomes a source of terror for all its citizens. And it was Julian Assange who said, we embarked on a mission to bring the First Amendment to the world. Little did we realize that our greatest challenge would come as we tried to bring the First Amendment to the United States. There's something else that Julian said. Every time we witness an injustice and do not act, we train our character to be passive in its presence and thereby eventually lose all ability to defend ourselves and those we love. So we are acting. We will not be passive in the face of this injustice. We will not give up this fight for freedom of the press, for our democracy, for Julian Assange. Thank you. Wow. I didn't think anybody could follow Roger Waters. You did it. Yeah. All right, we still have uh, a lot of speakers. We have uh, Katie Halpers here, Ooh. Nick Brana, who's a favorite of that guy out there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Raging Grannies are going to uh, close it out. Uh, but right now, the Raging Grannies, right. They got, there. there's their songbook, all right? Now, I want you to know this, about three years ago, someone inside the, uh, uh, lives in Spain, who is a lawyer working on the UC Global uh, Affair, uh, sent me a ton of files about UC Global that were not known to anybody. One of the attorneys said something last year about it, when I was listening to this guy rather than focusing. <laughs> well, how come Reagan? Reagan was able to go right through it. Hey, you're a piece of garbage, Reagan. Yes, thank you very much. I might would just like to continue. You suck. And let me just say. <laughs> but uh, my stand-up days. Um, but uh, this uh, attorney gave me some files, and he says, I said, what am I going to do with this? He says, so, find a journalist who can take it, make sense out of it, and write it fast. Who would that be, Randy? I said to the guy, Max Blumenthal. So I gave the stuff to Max Blumenthal, and he wrote three brilliant, epic, 10,000-word stories on it. Would you please welcome Max Blumenthal from the Free Zone. Thank you, Randy. Yeah, thank you, Randy. Can't thank you enough. You're a soldier. I will speak louder. I, I'll speak louder. I was hearing some babbling around the out, outskirts. I don't know. Was, was President Biden here? What can I, you, everyone's trying to take my coffee. Man. I'm glad everyone stayed after Roger Waters and Ben Cohen for the, the little people. Just a, a humble editor. 
of a website that was just declared by Wik Wikipedia to be far left and far right at the same time. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second, because it does relate. Um, yeah, I came in last night, had dinner with an old friend, a not political friend, and he brought his apolitical girlfriend who brought her apolitical corporate friends. Very nice people, I mean, great people. And after two hours of talking about themselves, they, they asked me what I was doing in New York. And I said, I'm speaking at a rally for Julian Assange. And they just drew a blank and said, who the hell is Julian? Julian, Julian Lennon, Julian who? Julius Irving. They didn't know who Julian Assange was. And these are people that are highly educated. And they have been betrayed. No, it's, it's not their fault. And when I told them who Julian Assange was, and that he is being literally tortured and has been in solitary confinement for a thousand days and more for exposing official corruption and the crimes of our national security state. They were horrified and you could actually see tears in their eyes when they learned that he was also a father and a husband who has been deprived of holding his children simply because he told the truth about our national security state. We have an entire population to reach here. Most people do not know who Julian Assange is and that's why this work is so important. Now I'll tell you about another event I went to earlier this year in Los Angeles. Some of you might not like it from the lockdown left, but it was at a rally to defeat the mandates. Yeah. Those of you who don't like it, it's irrelevant. We all need to get along. We need to get over these divisions from the, from the pandemic. And I'm sorry you got mad at me, but I'm not mad at you. I'm sorry you fell for the PSYOP, but I was just there. I was just there to explain how I thought that the lockdowns and the health passports were creating a digital dystopia. And when I said that Julian Assange had warned about this for years, before I even called for his freedom, this right-leaning crowd got on its feet and cheered immediately for the freedom of Julian Assange. And it was an amazing moment. Now why? 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 Because they watch stuff like Tucker Carlson, and Tucker Carlson has had Roger Waters on repeatedly to advocate for Julian Assange. It's crazy, we're living in an upside down world right now where the Fox News network that was clamoring for the war in Iraq is now presenting space for people to advocate for the freedom of Julian Assange. And so there's an opportunity there. Randy really wants my coffee. <laughs> but who are the people that we have the hardest time trying to talk to about this? It's the progressives, the liberals, the MSNBC watchers, the people who read legacy media. We call them shit libs now, but these are educated people who read the New York Times and the Washington Post, and they don't realize the Washington Post is owned by one of the world's richest men who is a contractor for the CIA, who hosts the CIA's cloud at his Amazon. They don't realize that, and they are hostile to Julian Assange. So, the people who support the Patriot Act. So the, the mainstream media has become an enemy of the journalist, the most courageous publisher and journalist of our time. And I always tell this story, I always tell this story about the piece that I published that Randy mentioned at the Gray Zone about how the CIA was running an operation to surveil Julian Assange at the Ecuadorian Embassy. They had taken over the security through UC Global and so everyone who came in through the front door to visit Julian they thought they were speaking to an Ecuadorian you know, security guard. It was in fact a CIA asset who would take their devices, open their devices, invade their devices, and then send it back to Langley. So who were those, some of those people? Some of those people were reporters for these same publications that have demonized Julian Assange, painting him as a Russian spy and so on. One of them was Ellen Nakashima, the chief national security correspondent for the Washington Post. I published photos of her devices that were opened by CIA assets at UC Global. Just to, re just to restate that, the chief national security correspondent for the Washington Post had her devices infiltrated by the CIA. Now, can you imagine if the Russian FSB did that? What would have happened? There would have been headlines on every mainstream publication. I went to the Washington Post. I went to Ellen Nakashima. I said, do you have any comment on this? Do you have anything to say about this? No. Silence. Crickets. Not a goddamn thing because they can't bite the hand that feeds them. They are coward. No, they are, they are, they're worse than cowards. 
They are the voice of the national security state that Julian Assange exposed. They are the stenographers for our secret government, and they betrayed Julian Assange. So though a letter recently came out. Thank you to the New York Times publisher, Arthur Sulzberger, for participating in this letter. Several mainstream legacy publications called for the U.S. to drop the Espionage Act charges against Julian Assange. Finally, finally, years later, they finally did this. The New York Times was the only American publication to sign that letter. No LA Times, no Chicago Tribune, no Washington Post, no Wall Street Journal, no Associated Press, no Reuters, because they are the stenographers for the national security state. They are worse than cowards. They are part of the crimes that Julian Assange exposed. Julian Assange asked, what is the average death count for every Western journalist? And that is a question we need to continue to ask today. Those people know that they will never be on the hook. They will never face punishment, as Julian Assange did, because they will never do what he did. But those of us who do, and we do this at the gray zone, if you read anything Kit Clarenberg published recently about the British national security state, British intelligence, we continue to do this. There is a target on our back because of what is happening to Julian Assange. And so we are fighting not only for the right Julian Assange to hold his children and be with his wife. We're fighting for the right to expose the secret government, the national security state, the Central Intelligence Agency, which has a $90 billion or more black budget, which has infested Facebook, Twitter, and other social media platforms with its former agents. And we see Garland Nixon here is banned from Twitter. I thought, I thought Elon Musk was exposing censorship. National security state contractor Elon Musk, I thought he was exposing censorship. He said only the right is censored. Well, why are anti-imperialists like Garland Nixon censored? Why are they suspended? Why? Why isn't he leaking the files about that? Why isn't he leaking the files about Russiagate? Why isn't he leaking the files about everyone who criticized the Ukraine proxy war being suspended? Why has Elon Musk not restored the Twitter account of Julian Assange? Can we at least free yeah. Julian Assange's Twitter account? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So I want to close by reading an email from Julian Assange. Hi all, I'm in Iceland. You should be too, or at least reporting about it. I've been in Iceland the past few weeks advising parliamentarians here on a cross-party proposal to turn Iceland into an international journalism haven, a jurisdiction designed to attract organizations into publishing online from Iceland by adopting the strongest press and source protection laws from around the world. In my role as WikiLeaks editor, I've been involved in fighting off many legal attacks. To do that and keep our sources safe, we have had to spread assets, encrypt everything, and move telecommunications and people around the world to activate protective laws and national jurisdictions goes on, but he says, that's why I'm excited about what is happening in Iceland, which has started to see the world in a new way after its mini revolution a year ago. That was February 2010, and today Julian Assange has been captured. And he was captured because he was, and, and he's being tortured because he was leading a revolution in journalism. And it's, that's why, not because he violated some espionage act, so it's our job today to continue that revolution, to continue the revolution that Julian Assange and WikiLeaks started, and to see Julian Assange standing here with us and his family, to see that revolution through. Thank you. Max Blumenthal. They want an encore, Max. All right. Uh, somebody please give me back the coffee. No. There's another. I, someone. I'm sorry, Max, but I wasn't unable to bring up. What are you doing with this? Where's my. Oh, here it is. Max. A new coffee just for you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Should I, should I put a mask on? I would, <laughs> no, but I would get a taster for that. It came from uh, Mark Zaid. <laughs> All right.
Everything okay? Yeah. Let's hear that chant again. Free Julian Assange. Do we? Julian Assange. Do you have something else to say? Would you like to bring up Katie Halpern? You? Yes. I'm going to give it back to my dear friend over here. By the way, way back in 1997, I met him for the first time. He had already been working on the Chevron case for four years. 30 years he has worked on the Chevron case. So we've been doing this, what, for 10 years? You got to keep fighting and don't stop, all right? He hasn't, and he's a prime example. If you keep fighting, you can win. Once again, Steve Donziger. Thank you, Randy. Thank you so much. I actually met Randy in the mid-80s in Managua when he was performing comedy in front of the U.S. Embassy during the Contra War. Do you remember that? Yes, I okay. do. It was my best crowd ever. <laughs> um, I want to introduce someone. Max, by the way, that was a great speech. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. I want to introduce someone I greatly admire, um, Katie Halper. Woo! Uh, literally a year ago, two days ago, a year ago, two days ago, Katie helped organize, when I was in prison, a online rally fundraiser for my defense fund, along with some others, Crystal Ball and um, Brianna Joy Gray, who else? Marianne Williamson. Williamson. Like, powerful women, okay? <laughs> Love it. Um, and bizarrely, like literally the very next day, they let me go home from prison. The very next day. And in the course of my, um, I don't know how much y'all know about my situation, but I was locked up for almost a thousand days at home, 45 days in prison, in this retaliation slap lawsuit that Chevron filed against me after I helped indigenous peoples win a big pollution judgment in Ecuador long story but bottom line is it was an unjust case and I was sitting in the Upper West Side of Manhattan like year after I mean two years and two months where I could even get a trial and like the New York Times wouldn't cover the fact that there was an American human rights lawyer in detention put there by a private Chevron prosecutor not even by the US government and it was people like Katie and Max and Marianne Williamson and all of these independent journalists who were able to get the narrative, the truthful narrative of what had happened out there when the mainstream media almost completely ignored it. So I love you. And, and beyond that, I got familiar with her great podcast and all her journalism. And it's not only is it like brilliant and incisive, it's totally entertaining. Get up here. Yeah. Katie Halper. Prisoner out. We, we, need to get, we got one political prisoner out. We have a couple more to take care of. Leonard Peltier, for yes. example, and of course Julian Assange. Mamiya! And Mamiya, free Mamiya, yes. Um, and uh, by the way, my the fan my fan is out here. I want to thank him for amplifying my voice. Uh, that's the guy yelling about some of us. Uh, can we do a prison swap between him and Julian? They may exchange them. Swap them. Swap them. Yeah, or John Bolton. Yeah, I'm, I kid, because unlike Biden uh, and uh, Trump, I don't actually believe in imprisoning people for their ideas. So yeah. keep going, my friend. You're my biggest hype man. But, um, you know, it is really wonderful to be here with all these speakers we need to come up with the ben and jerry's flavor for julian assange maybe that'll get his name into the discourse the t taste of freedom freedom chock full of truth or something i don't know we'll figure it out uh liberty on ice that doesn't have a great ring to it but it's basically what's happening right get now. close to the microphone okay so really quickly i just want to say it's really surprising that joe biden isn't freeing julian assange because you'd think that he would understand he himself having been, of course, locked up for visiting Nelson Mandela in South Africa, <laughs> right? You think that he'd get it from his days, just like Julian Assange is deprived of sunlight. Joe Biden knows that feeling very well from toiling in the mine shafts, how he spent his youth and his fathers before him did as well, apparently. Also, you think that he would resonate with Julian Assange because, of course, 
Julian Assange refuses to stand down. He takes uh, on power, state power, corporate power, refuses to back down. And Joe Biden, of course, refuses to back down in the face of Corn Pop, a really bad dude who he met when he was a civil rights activist, by which he meant literally working as a lifeguard at a pool where some black people would swim. Uh, which is, if that's not a white savior complex, then I don't know what is. But really, this is a terrible moment. This is a terrible stain on our history, which is already very stained. Um, it's pretty despicable. It took this long for these publications, which worked with WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, to say that maybe he shouldn't be killed for the crime of journalism. I'm glad they did it, but it's a too little too late. They already have blood on their hands. and. It's really not that hard to be on the right side of this issue. This has nothing to do with 2016. People had their brains broken by Trump. But if anyone you know is a liberal, just ask them why they don't believe in the First Amendment, why they don't believe in free speech. Remind them that they were so rightfully upset by Trump's attacks on the Fourth Estate. They should be upset by anyone's attacks on the Fourth Estate. Also remind them that Obama, because a lot of these people like Obama, which is whatever, but a lot of them do, remind them that Obama was a little bit restrained in going after Assange because of the quote-unquote New York Times problem, right? He got that if he went after Julian Assange, he'd have to go after the New York Times. So this is what we need to remind people to do. If your friends are liberal, tell them to side with Obama over Trump. Tell them that Joe Biden needs to do the right thing and free Julian Assange. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, that was great. Where are you going? Stand over here. All right, well, we have another speaker, maybe another one after that, but first, uh, no, not first, after that, the Raging Grannies, so stick around for the Raging Grannies, they are our musical closer, they're the headliners here today, so don't go anywhere, Chuck, you hold on to that, the next speaker. Now, I was in D.C. for about four months there with this truck, trying to get people to pass out flyers with me, uh, and it was difficult very difficult to get people out there on the street to pass out flyers, which is something we've got to do. It's not just today, tomorrow, get into a subway here in New York City. This is a very critical moment for Assange because once he's here, he's not getting out. So right now, everyone's got to redouble their efforts, mobilize and get out there on the streets. It's very serious right now. So. I was in D.C. and a few people, oh, I got some all over my coffee, all right. Sorry about the coffee, Max, but I, I replaced it with hotter coffee. Yours was flat. Um, that's why you gotta go to Pete's instead of Starbucks. But um, I'll take the mic now. All right, so, um, so at any rate, uh, they came down, uh, Bernadette and, uh, and uh, my good friend here, Chuck, they came down many times to D.C. to pass out flyers. Marty was down there many times. Marty, from uh, who's been an organizer here. Thank you, Marty, for showing up. Uh, Marty Goodman, give him a round of applause. <laughs> and down in D.C., the whole time I was there, it was difficult when I was there on the truck. One person showed up in front of George Washington University about a month ago for three straight days and passed out flyers and went into the subways and did the same thing. He is the national coordinator for the People's Party and worked with Bernie Sanders for a long period of time. He was a, 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 a distributor of information for Bernie Sanders who has yet to come out and support Julian Assange and uh, he would prefer to support the war in Ukraine. All right. It's a good war, it's a fabulous war, it's a wonderful war. Right. It sounds like Jackie Mason. All right, so. Nick Prana, give him a round of applause. Hey. Less is more. Less is more. All right. Free Julian Assange. Free Julian Assange. Free Julian Assange. Free Julian Assange. My friends, <laughs> Randy, thank you for that introduction. Thank you, everyone who's organized today. Uh, my friends, we meet today as the world stares into the abyss of nuclear winter. 
that long freeze that follows the raging fire of humanity's last war. A new ice age of our own making, where the ash of humanity blots out the sun, where the oceans freeze and the crops perish, where the lights flicker and fade, where famine and plague kill all who survived the blast. The sudden extinction of almost all life on Earth. A cold and dead world, all that remains of a once lush oasis in the vast emptiness of space. Free Assange! Free Assange! Free Assange! Free Assange! Because we stand on the edge of that future and fearless independent journalists like Julian Assange are the only ones who stand in the way. People like Garland Nixon, Max Blumenthal, independent journalists are the only ones arming us with the truth to avoid that future. My friends, we meet as a new global aristocracy of ultra billionaires, extends their control into every aspect of our life. A high tech dystopia where every move is tracked, every device surveilled, where police protect the ruling class with military weapons and killer robots, where super viruses that could wipe out humanity are engineered in labs around the world. This dystopian future that only science fiction writers and artists truly predicted, Aldous Huxley, George Orwell, William Gibson, Roger Waters, a world where freedom and autonomy are stripped, where our civil liberties and medical freedom are extinguished, where our right to strike against the corporate masters is taken away. That's right. Free Assange! Free Assange! Free Assange! Free Assange! Free Assange because truth tellers like him are the only ones who can arm us with the information to fight back. But most of all, free Julian Assange because he's an innocent man with a great heart. Because his compassion spans the world and has touched millions of lives, including every one of us here. Free Julian because he exemplifies the courage that every one of us will have to show if humanity is to survive. And free Julian because his family is waiting for him. Stella, Gabriel, John, his two young boys. Because Julian belongs back in their arms. Thank you, Randy, Chuck, everyone from Assange Countdown to Freedom, everyone from NYC, Free Assange, who organized this today. You all give the world hope. All right, thank you. Powerful speech. Now go up out there and quiet that guy that doesn't <laughs> like you or Katie, all right? Now he hates me. It's all right. Finally, he got quiet when it's all over. All right, hey, listen. This is beginning to sound like the sound system on the C train. All right, can you hear me? <laughs> Next door, fire center, turn it out. And well, I want to you know, take uh, 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 the 34th Street Galaxy, the Alpha Galaxy, the, uh, the A, B, C, D, and the L train. All right. <laughs> she loves it. All right. Where are those raging grannies, folks? <laughs> Got to go fight. Isn't that soccer game on? The soccer game. It's over. I hope it was a tie and they both lost, France and England. <laughs> Are you all here? Yeah, we need some. We need some more. Who else wants to raise? Well, how many people are in the raging grannies? Oh, we have, we have a whole bunch, but only two that's showed that's up, so it's almost. Do you want to join the group? Right here, right here. Yeah, grandkids. No, not yet. I got grandkids. Can I be a raging granny? Yeah, yeah. I don't even have kids. <laughs> Sophia, Sophia. Sophia's my grandchild. Yeah. 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 Yeah
All right, there she is. All right. Folks, I feel like Ed Sullivan, right here on our show today, right from Broadway, are the Raging Grannies. I guess if you can all hug that same microphone. Oh, okay. All right, just sing a mic. It's this one. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, that's Can you hear us all right? Okay, we're going to sing Julian's anthem. Anthem to My Country Tis of Thee. Ready? Our, ready? Our country isn't free. Where's our humanity? We protest now. Julian Assange was right, brought secret files to light. He's locked up and tortured day and night. Why is this allowed? Our Julian is so bold, thinks that truth should be told. Is this a crime? Why not let Julian show where our tax dollars go? When we pay for war crimes, we should know. Why is he serving time? Boy, am I bad. Editor, publisher, WikiLeaks founder, imprisoned and sick. U.S. don't, don't extradite time now. He did what's right for press freedom. Now we all must fight. Free Julian, make it quick. All right. Yeah. Of course, that's the music from Bob All right, Save one more. One more, one and more. that's it. Okay. One more, <laughs> and then we'll have okay. we have more. We have the flying Karamazov brothers. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lovely song that was written a few years ago by our Carolina, who's in Florida, and it's unpracticed. Sorry, and it goes to um, "Swing on a Star," great melody. Yes. Would, would, would you like? Ready? Would you like, like to keep our press free? To the truth, we'd all have a key. Let reporters write what they see. Or would you rather jail Assange? Assange is a journalist with very long ears. He spits out everything he hears. He shared the truth of Hillary's sins. Now they want him jailed because she didn't win. And by the way, if you go out on a limb, you might grow up to be like him. Would you like to keep our press free? To the truth, we'd all have a key. To let reporters write what they see. Or would you lock up Chelsea? Chelsea, the soldier found wrong. She had to show army telling doesn't go very well. So she carried them off to WikiLeaks. Then she served her time and did not speak. So if you don't want to lie and be a cur, you might grow up to be like her. Would you like to keep our press free? To the truth, we'd all have a key. Let reporters write what they see. Or would you rather try Ellsberg? Daniel read secrets about Vietnam. What was there gave him quite a qualm. He exposed the Pentagon's plans. They dismissed the charges. He's a free man. If you think that's the way you should behave, you might grow up to be that brave. Not all heroes the hard line they told. Something people simply ought to know. If you think truth should always overflow, you might just learn to whistle blow. You might just learn to whistle blow. All right, they're raging grannies! I'll tell you, Roger couldn't follow that. All right. All right, they're raging grannies once again.
I want to thank everybody. Where's that list? Great. Garland Nixon, thank you for showing up today. Nick Prana. Uh, Seven. You. Where's uh, Steve? Uh, you. Chuck Slatkin. Max de Blumenthal, my man. Who else? Joe Luria. Hi, uh, Joe Luria. Where is? Oh, there you are. You want to finish that story now? No. I cut him off a little early because he saw Roger coming. I said Nick Prada. I know I'm missing. Oh, the ice cream man. Did he take off with the Jerry Garcia? What? He left. He left. All right. And thank you to Randy Credit. And Margaret Ratner Kunstler. Margaret Ratner Kunstler, of course. And Sophia. Now, let, you don't know the story. When my Bianca died a year ago, we were all out here a year ago. Bianca had just died. We were here, it was half this size, and uh, Roger saw how depressed I was, and a few months later, this dog landed on my doorstep, right here. This dog is from Roger Waters, and so is the sweater. So thank you, Roger, for that. Her name is Sophia, and she's really wonderful.